The forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Welcome back to Queen of Embers, episodes 44 and 45. I'm your Grandmaster Daniel Fox. This is the game, the cult, playtesters who made, Mungo, Zweihander, and um, Queen of Embers. Fucking awesome. Oh, and the Zweihander Player's Handbook. Thanks yeah. for that too, guys. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so, we should probably just dive right in. Uh, this, I think, is our third episode, third and fourth episode we've been recording with the Meeting Owl at this point. We started like 41, I think. Is I think it'll be our fourth Fourth, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Exciting. It is exciting. Exciting. Yeah. So let's pick up where we left off last week. So I believe we we started last week on the river, mm-hmm. right? Yes. So what happened from there? Uh, we we sailed down the river and then we arrived at uh, um, Kale Tyrion uh, to find that it was uh, amongst a couple of bluffs or uh, like uh, inside of a canyon pretty much that the river was flowing through Uh and uh, when we got there we uh, we were able to actually wait no I should back up some because we had an interesting conversation with uh, the barrister um, yeah I'm terrible with names this came Rosalia Rosalia yeah we have cards for that. Rosalia Mansfield. We do, they're right there. Um, and so she revealed that she had some information that she received that uh, there was going to be an attempt. <laughs> there was going to be an attempt on <laughs> um, uh, RK's life. Uh, is it Stanton or Clayton? Clayton. 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 I Clayton. Younger. I get Stanton. Pro- I get the brothers confused. Uh, it's from a previous campaign. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Clayton R.K. Uh, was going to have an attempt made on his life, and they do not think it'll be made with knives. Um, so we uh, we're, we're thinking poison, but you know it's not being confirmed. Could be a fork. Could be a fork. <laughs> it's a spoon. <laughs> yeah, I mean spork. Um, but. Uh, I'll carve your heart out with a spoon. Right, exactly. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so we arrive there. After we have some tense conversations after that, uh, we both center ourselves and we move past it. Um, we arrive at Kael Tyrion and we're put up inside of a house. and um, The Dupre Pavilion. Yeah, the yeah. Dupre Pavilion. Um, it's, uh, attended to by one, um, elderly servant, which, did we get his name? Is it Ernst. Ernst. No. Ernst. Ernst. Okay. Um. <clears throat> He's everywhere in Twyander. I yeah. know. <laughs> like, my character had PTSD, like, her deja vu. I was like, Ernst? I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he takes care of us, and he, um, will bring us food, uh, just pretty much take care of whatever needs we have. Um, also along the way, we, we found that, uh, um, Wolfgang, wherever his card is, um, Wolfgang, ah, Captain Wolfgang Copper was sick and wanted to keep it quiet. Um, so he was going to seek attention elsewhere when he arrived in town. Um... So we're basically, after that, I think we talked about what we're going to try to do at the uh, um, the masquerade and didn't really quite come up with a full plan because that's how we roll. That's right. So after stigmatizing the fact that Wolfgang had a sexually transmitted disease and couldn't let it go, somebody gained some corruption. <laughs> well, you guys kept talking corruption. about it and just, you know... We got it out of him eventually. 
That's what I like to refer to as using above board information to drive in character decisions. But it's okay, it's harmless. So, we pick up the following day down at the docks. You're down the, the lower part of the city in Kaltirian. Um, you'd spent your evening there at the Dupre Pavilion, sleeping in an old leaky house, the old kind of mansion there, Grey Garden style. So, floorboards are a little warped, the uh, plaster is cracked, wallpaper is peeled away, the windows are drafty, the fire doesn't seem to really burn hot enough to keep any chamber warm. Um, but uh, there you are. You're down in the lower part of the city. You're, you're near the Madeline that seems to be almost kind of slumping in the water. It's a magnificent, it's a magnificence, uh, uh, or what once appeared to be magnificent upon that great cradle which you had ported to hear from Durendal to Kael Tyrion now is sagging in the water. It looks like any other slapdash ship you'd see kind of crawling up river, save for the fact that this thing is born with one, or two, sorry, two solid masts, a ship that is not necessarily made for the river, but fortunately, um, the Axe Water is a very, very deep, broad river. So it does not threaten to scrape, uh, to scrape the, or to, to, to gather along the mud or silt along the sandy bars that surround this. All of the lower town, lower part of the city, um, is uh, it's pretty busy. Water lapping up against the docks. A number of boats are kind of linked up to jetties, and uh, a manner of trade is happening down here. A few dogs jump around and wander. Small children fishing along the river. Um, it is the winter months. No snow has quite fallen yet, but the trees that kind of slowly kind of twist and climb their way up the bluffs. Far overhead, where you see a very broad bridge that spans the upper city. Everything down here is cast in a deep, long shadow, making it colder than it would normally be. And the wind kind of coming through the bluffs as well makes it a little chilly down here. Although there is no, no once again, no snow, the trees have lost their leaves, but those twisted bushes that are stunted and kind of wretched looking, kind of like making their way out of a bluff, still kind of dot the, uh, the, the cold brown stone as it kind of reaches toward the sky. You've only but a sliver of white to see by, a streak of blue twisted like a, like a broad th ribbon above your head, uh, so far down below is the lower city and being shadowed by the city above and the bluffs as well. <clears throat> You're constantly in like kind of a, a daylight shadow. You'd imagine even the hottest of day. You imagine the hottest of days would be very very cool down here uh, in the middle of summer, because it like only sees light during midday during the zenith. Uh, but um, in this season, it makes it just a little tiny bit chillier down here. You've already paid for your. Um, you've already paid the um, the uh, river warden lockmaster. Uh, the money needed to keep the Madeline here until it's to be gifted. You know that you have but uh, two days, I believe, until the masquerade at um, the, quote, Baron Lord Clayton Arcade the Lesser's uh, mansion. So you have time to prepare. At last you left off, you were discussing a plan. You have yet to really get into the details, though, what to do. You did, however, come to one important decision. Um, who would actually be presenting the Madeline in court? And I believe that would have been Jonathan. Yep. Jonathan. Jonathan Van Der. Yeah, so anyways, like I said, welcome to the, uh, welcome to the, the company. I thank you. Yeah. I'm something of a joiner these days. Yeah. There's your initiation ceremony. Full pomp and everything. He narrows his eyes. Initiation ceremony? Uh, sure, I mean, doesn't doesn't everyone have one of those? Uh, there are some, like, ritualistic undertakings by a number of uh, societies, usually gentlemen's societies. Take that to uh, mean of them what you will. Well, what I think of gentlemen's societies is... They're only looking at half of the potential resources you can make, you can get. So. Oh, oh no! I completely agree with you on this accord. 
That's not what I imply. Yeah. What, what do you intend of me? Uh, no, just, you know, seeing as how you were voluntold that you'd be uh, presenting the oh. Madeline. Oh. Uh, you know. It would be the greatest honor of a uh, an early career. I can imagine nothing better. Yeah. Well, there you have it. I will certainly uh, speak of her grace and glory. All right. Well, we were talking about how we was going to get into the party, right? We all were going to wear masks. Is that the idea? Well, isn't everybody going to be wearing masks? I don't know about that. It doesn't sit right with me trying to wear someone else's face. Just in my style. Who says you'd be someone else? Well, I do I really am. This is my face. I'm going to wear it for the rest of my days. So, That's it. So how are you going to get in? You going to be a... a Servant? Servant? Be serving food? I reckon, sure. Why not? All right. That might not be a bad idea if he's working in the kitchens. He was thinking poison. Yeah, and... Uh, I well, think we're going to be able to meet with him before the, huh? the, the, the... I reckon, I think that's uh, something the barrister said she'd attempt, but did not guarantee. And I oh, would not right. yeah. build upon plans based around that. My lady, my lady, you hear uh, Mistress Rosalia Mansfield call as she's coming down the gangplank. She's waving to to Elisa. You've yet to join the others as you were making some, I believe you were all kind of mixing it up a bit in the morning and purchasing some things, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, well, and she also would have gone back. She's going to be looking at the cauldron in the next couple days, just trying to piece together anything else she can. The cauldron? Oh, yes, yes, yes. On the Madeline. Milady! Mr. Rosalia says, when yes. you're about to board. <clears throat> I've yet to see the others this morning. Good morning to you, she says. Maru, did not expect you down at the docks. Not seen your place. Well, as I mentioned, I did have business in the city. It just so happens that a uh, uh, breakthrough <laughs> this morning. Breakthrough? Yes, well, we spoke about that uh, the Lord Parquet uh, was to uh, invite a great number of folk uh, in the city. Yes. I had taken it upon myself to gather the guest list. Oh. I had achieved, I had gained it from uh, uh, Clayton's quartermaster, a man named Kennison Algiers. All right. <clears throat> a curious, now he did say these are perhaps the most important guests who will be attending, uh, and there are a great many. And I'll hand this list to you, but hear me out. Uh, first, there's someone named Armani Warhol. The Baron himself, of course, a woman named Delilah, a fellow named Dirge the Younger, a woman, Domina Satine, a Gothric man who they call the Ice King, uh, Hagen Hasselnus, a Josephine Baker, Lady Gabriella Arke, the Baron's wife, of course, Oliver Ramsey, a rather loudmouth cook, as I understand it. R.H. Block, a local taxman, Sir Genity Copper, Tobias Stroh, and Vedico Bain. Alright. I should hand the list to you, milady. Yes. <clears throat> I, I do apologize. I must be along my way, but no less. I wanted to leave the list with you and to the others. I'm afraid I will be most tied up for the next, the next few days, but perhaps we can reconvene uh, to sup, or to, rather to, to, to uh, break off fast tomorrow. This would be appreciated. Um, one last thing before you uh, take your yes. leave. Yes. Uh, the majority of these people, I assume, would be in the other part of the city, yes? I'm sorry? The, the, these people, the people on the, the guest list, I would assume the majority of them would be in the upper part of the city. Did you say that's correct? Truth be told, I'm not certain. I can assure you of this, though. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> there is the, one of these men on the list, Tobias Stroh, mm. is a trader who owns several river barges that travel all the way between Old Lork and Roeline. 
He would likely be found in the lower city, if you were to find him. So they shall be spread across the city, then. I should suspect. Um, the other, though, uh, the steward of uh, Baron Arke's house, the man Kinnison Algiers, he will doubtlessly be in the upper city. I know that he was in uh, quite a fluster when I had approached him to acquire the guest list. Right. Thank you. Then I, uh, I suppose you have things to see to. I'll make sure this information gets back. Of course, of course. She smiles. Yes. You find yourself uh, with the others as they're <clears throat> all atop deck themselves. You can see that Rosalia Mansfield is kind of, she's picked up, she's lifted her skirts and she's scurrying away as she has things to do apparently in the city. But um, Elisa, as she walks up the gangplank to the Madeline, is kind of observing a rather lengthy list, a pair of, pa- pieces, of, pair of pieces of parchment. I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll uh, recognize barrister as she's walking by just out of courtesy good morrow she says she continues on her way yeah about her business sorry that was third person <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um well so we've got uh some time before we need to be at this masquerade Correct. So, I had a question. Now, I'm not one of the upper people like you two, but do, do the Dufresne have any agents in this city? Perhaps that have collected information over time that we could speak to? Do we have any contacts? Mm, possible. I will rack my brain to see if I've heard of any contacts within... Um, uh, Kael Tyrion that I might be able to find as far as the Dufresne Agency goes. Mm. Close by. <laughs> Make a scrutinized test. This test will be standard. Okay, Kael Tyrion. Make this, or only? this would be him. Oh. Can I assist? These will be old war buddies of could, his. Could I assist them? Do you have martial melee or martial range? No, I have scrutinized. But... Better... <sighs> Sorry. So I will make a scrutiny test. Scrutiny. And uh, standard will be 41%. And a 49 won't do it. Now I could try to re-roll that if we wanted to. Your call. It's 41, you said? Yeah. That's uh, not a horrible percent. It's not terrible. Can't say no whole lot of people around here! Sammy says as he comes up from down below, wiping the sweat from his brow. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump in the middle of your conversation like that! Right. I mean, I'm just fixing that the uh, best idea might be to talk to people <clears throat> you know. I would know no one. Unfortunately. Most of my folks are, anyone I know is, well, not here. Remember, Elisa has a pair of papers in her hand with a number of names all over it. That oh. is obvious, that is. <laughs> Is very obvious, in fact. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like, she didn't tell me. So. Well, yeah, you guys are still talking. Yeah. She's not rude. All right. So, yeah, I can't quite remember. It's... I never really made it out this way, so I... I tried to think if I ever heard, you know, somebody after... After I did me time serving, saying, I'm going to go to Kael t- uh, Tyrion, but it's not something you hear very often. Oh, we have a list now to work off of, at least. Oh? Yes. Um, she reads off the names again on the invitation. So this is everyone that's going to be there. Of important. Of note. Of yes. note. Hmm. Yeah, the names sound familiar, but I can't quite place them. <clears throat> Some of them. Oh, I've heard at least a few of them been tossed around, but I can't say that I know them well. Yeah. well rattle them off, then. Sammy says. Okay, uh, Armani Warhol. Um, of course, there's Baron Clayton, the host. Delilah, Dirge the Younger, uh, Dominus Satine, Hagen Hesselmus, Josephine Booker, uh, Kenneth and Algiers is the quartermaster, from which we got the list. Uh, Lady Gabriella Arke, um, Oliver Ramsey, R.H. Block, who is apparently a taxman of some sort, Sir Genity 
Copper, uh, copper, who I assume is related to Wolfgang. Um, Tobias Stroh and Veda Cobain. Veda Cobain immediately strikes a chord with you, with you, um, Jonathan. Does he happen to play music? He is a he is the baritone of Bellagain, as he is known in the uh, aristocratic circles. An entertainer, a well known entertainer, in fact, a lutist. Is he from around uh, these parts? He is to the from the west. So he's from. He's the baritone of Bellagain, the mm. old capital. Oh, right, of course. Oh, there's that. The. Uh, a distinguished entertainer, one that you would have at your uh, at your uh, party to indicate that you had both exquisite taste and extra coin, just burning a hole in mm. your very expensive pockets. So, if he was to be looking for someone to entertain, you can't find a better man. You can't uh, find a better man. Yes. The dreams and colors. <laughs> So, I would be surprised if he would even have him uh, have him sing. I bet his intent is just to show him off like one would, like a prized, a prized hound. Hmm. Let's say, look what I can bring to this occasion. Yeah, you'll find that there will be a lot of that. Now you remember one of the names as they rattle off Dirge the Younger, like there's kind of this, oh, that guy. Like, he is a, well, you know, you, Adam, know about him, and you yeah. may confer that information as your character, too. Okay. Well, I, I remember the name, but I don't remember all the details. Like, I, I hardly remember any. I just remember, like, I heard that one, and there was another, but, yeah. yeah. Um, so, Adam's having a little trouble remembering. Dirge the Younger uh, was once the, uh, the uh, men-at-arms for... Um, Baron Bernard Dupre. That's right. <clears throat> yeah. Dirge, he's called Dirge the Younger, even though he is not the second of his name, which normally you would say the Younger if you were the second of your name. Uh, he's called Dirge the Younger because he has always had, he's always had a, he's always, he's always looked very, very old and been very, very young. <clears throat> but he must be in his 50s by now, not 60s. Yeah. Well, you see, when you say, Dead younger. There was, uh, there was one of them that was man at arms for the RK. And, uh, that's Dirge. Hmm. So, he's a bit of a fighting man himself. Well, at least you'll have something in the palm of interest if you need to speak to him then. Well, hopefully, I'm not. Coming off as a soldier, even though it's going to be hard for me to do. Um, Would it be unusual for a man at arms to attend uh, such company without the uh, attendance of his uh, of his master? Well, you see, when when you're an established war hero. Um, and I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't necessarily say hero because they lost. But uh, still, um, you know, he was quite influential um, when the Genevieve were fighting the Arcades. Uh, he he posed quite a bit of a problem for my grandfather. Seems like that is a uh, rather insulting invite. Then. If they knew I was coming, yeah, it is. But do you think they really know that I'm coming? Well, for them to have this uh, this younger fellow as well. Then. Well, I mean, yeah, but he was a he was a man at arms for for the RK. Oh, I see. And we're here in the land of the RK. Oh, so, I see. Uh, no, I that, mean, is the, that is the salient detail, though, which was escaping me. Right. If if they knew that a Forrester was coming, yeah, it might be. But... Now, that is not yes. Now that it is clear, I understand. Yeah. And, uh, 
Harper, your the name that comes to you immediately uh, once they rattle those names off is Kinnison Algiers. The man is a uh, peacemaker. In fact, he um, is the one who negotiated the treaty, short as it was, between the Malisters, uh, who are now who is now House of the King, uh, and the Dupre. Hmm. <clears throat> He's the one who actually negotiated the sack of Hastings between the Genevieve and uh, Dupre. He's the one who actually was able to call for peace. <clears throat> he was a Genevieve man. All right. Yeah, I'll relay that information to the rest. So at least we know a little bit more about another person on that list. But he was a Ginny man. So he could be some trouble. Well... Ralph, maybe, but I mean, he's, a, he's a peacemaker. Can't be caught in too much trouble. But he might. I don't know if this is upstart is going to cause well, not peace. But I don't know. I think this is probably the most peaceful way to do it. Because if it fails, then there would be war. Mm-hmm. So I would think he'd probably be pro any movement that wouldn't cause. A war. I probably think he's probably a friend of the Baron. So are we just gossiping here or speculating on who's going to be doing the deed? So I'm a little confused. Well, we're sharing a I mean, bit of information. We got, we, got, we got this list of names, right? Right. And, you know, not everyone on that list is... I mean, there's more people going to the party than what's on the list, right? Right. But, you know, we hear the rumor that uh, you'll... Uh, What's his name? The Lord or whoever. He's going to be killed. Not by a knife. But I'm expecting if a noble heard the rumor, then the source of the killing would come from a noble too. Alright. That's, that's, that's the going, going knowledge. Am I right? Yeah. So, this list of names, I expect, probably have one of them would be the one that it's coming from, right? Is, yes. that what, is that what we're following along? Perhaps. So, my thinking is, is there any way that we can rule any of them out? We can rule out Leighton. Yep. Alright. I assume he's not going to kill himself, but who knows at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Stranger things happen. <laughs> See, yeah. Yeah. 13. Yeah. No one kills me but me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he own. wants to beat someone to the punch, I suppose. <laughs> but I, I would assume that is the one person we can rule off. The rest of them, <clears throat> until we have enough information, I, I don't know that there would be a way. So, but Genity Carver, is he related to Wolfgang? Do any of us know? I mean, Carver, right? That's oh, he's, he's, he's related, all right. But is that the one that's related to him? These brothers! Huh. I thought so. Well, I don't know how their family functions, but I'd almost... <laughs> you have something, Sonny. No, I don't know much about Jenny. He don't talk much about him. So probably not that well, then. They function. <clears throat> so... With the last name, not a cop, I... We at least know that they didn't start off in high society, even if they're there now. I don't know if they are. Right. Well, isn't Wolfgang's sister uh, married? Yes, sir. Uh, right? Yes. So his brother, I mean, can't be no one important. Obviously, that's why he's on the list. Right. No, someone important, but if, if they got along, I would assume that the wants of Wolfgang, which would be for the Baroness to succeed, would also go along with his family. Hence the reason I thought if they did have a good relationship, it might be someone we could somewhat rule off. But mm. if they don't, well, that stays in the aunt air then, doesn't it? The progeny of Hugo Copper certainly come with money, though not uh, distinction. Um, One that's befitting of their, uh, like you said, of their father. I would think Wolfgang would be a good person to talk to. Though. He uh, would know some of these names, at least. I know, I know my own weaknesses, and I'm not the greatest at subterfuge, as we all know. 
And so, I'm looking for ideas from you lot. I, uh, my mind is to spend the days that we've got trying to find out anything we can about the names on these lists. That means just asking around town, maybe trying to meet with a few of them ahead of time. You know, a bit of the, a bit of the jaw flapping, you know? I mean, Bannister, or Banneker and I have in the past spent <laughs> many good hours in a, in a uh, tavern trying to suss out from the local folk. You know, generally what the thoughts are. People, we do the same. We, I mean, ordinarily, wouldn't that be a pretty good idea? But it seems as these cities are pretty, you know, separated. Right, but the masquerade's gonna be down here, right? <laughs> it is. The masquerade would be at the Baron's estate. I assume. Do we know exactly where the masquerade's gonna take place at? No, the will be in the upper city. Oh, it is in the upper city. Okay. Yes. So I knew his power base is down here. Her so I didn't know if his the party would be down here too, because he controls the taxes on the river, right? <coughs> he does, but as you learn, as uh, Elisa learned, he does it through someone named uh, R.H. Block. So, all right. Well, I mean, I ain't much for rubbing shoulders with uh, high-end folk like. Well, our good buddy Banneker, but uh... well, we've got got someone else from that world now. We've also got someone with a name, at the least, if she cares to use it. I doubt that the one thing that the name could give me without me stating it is I'm a certain propensity to be able to at least fit in. So, I'm considering not all of these names are names, if you will. Uh, note, it doesn't necessarily mean that my name would carry that much weight, mm. or that good of one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> do we have any suggestions for what we should be doing? We have, we have no uh, inkling as to where the rumor itself came from. Yeah. That'd be a good place to start. Well, it? I thought that uh, Rosalia Manfield, she said that the letter came from uh, uh, Wolfgang's uh, sister. Uh, right? Okay. Isn't that what Rosalia said? Warning of the assassination. Yeah. No. no. She said her contacts. No. She never states She refused to tell you who they were. Remember, we tried to ask, and she kept um, hedging. Well, it's smart to do. You don't want to give away your contacts. Well, so for it could life, save a person's life. We've got a life and death situation. I guess it'd be on her if we could, could figure it out. <laughs> Correct. No, we can't do that. We're a different agency. We should be able to come up with something. But the answer is. I'm just saying it'd be a good it'd be a good lead, but hey, we can't work with it. Just you know, set aside, do it to something else. Yeah. Strikes to me, it's very obvious that we find ourselves in the uh, early chapters of a uh, a murder mystery, if you will. Suspicious, colorful characters, a list of names. I'm willing to bet almost uh, right out this rusted sort of off-hinged gate, but all of them have some sort of uh, plausible motive for why they would want to see the Baron dead. You ain't saying this thing is some sort of crazy stage thing that nobles would do for, for, for laughs, are you saying? I don't know. I'm saying that I've read enough books that I've seen that I've read this chapter before. A murder mystery masquerade ball with finger food. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, then obviously it has to be the help, right? Oh, um, so... I read a story like that similar once, and so that means that if you just go in and you make a fool of yourself, and you eat all, a whole bunch of food more than you're supposed to, and you and you and you mouth off to the right people through your plucky luck, you'll still end up uh, solving the mystery by accident. 
<laughs> I wouldn't stake his life on that. But, uh, well, I mean, the uh, tale be intended for adolescents by chance? Well, I mean, the, the champion passenger did it, and, you know. Uh, Sounds like something fitting for uh, Lyndon Genevieve's, uh, what's the name of the page rifles he had read about them? Uh, Lyndon Ge- uh, wait. The Adventurous Exploits of Lyndon Genevieve, the Younger Man of the People, Champion Passenger of... Hastings. Trade Gate? I reckon it was Trade Gate, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, there's... Well, tawdry stories aside, uh, though it could indeed be the butler at this point, we probably should be looking into the other names. Well, all the names are sound like they are suspects based on those names having found their way into our possession, right? Yeah. <laughs> Correct. It's probably easy to get enough gossip without giving anything away to find out what they might have against the parent. I bet it's not that difficult to get people to talk. Okay, so... I bet if you ask anyone, whispers on the street will probably uh, give you the information you need. And so, que- the question is, what's the question? Huh. I guess that does need to be formulated a little better. Hey, <laughs> what does the tax man have against the Baron? I've heard some things. Okay, well, Let I can... Let them fill can, in the gaps. I can do that. No, I'm just kidding. I know that's not a good idea. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I'm not very good at this particular aspect of uh, things and more or less things that, things that we've uh, investigated before was... Uh, it's strange in nature. Like, Please continue. I'll be right back. You know, Jack. Please continue. You know. A bit of a stranger nature, you know, such as uh, people disappearing and leaving blue cloaks behind and sorts of weird stuff and inve- investigating people with a, yeah. a wooden sword that never burns out, even though it burns. I know this sounds kind of ham-fisted and all, but <laughs> you know, we got we know the person's going to be wearing blue, what whatnot. Just have someone watch every person that's blue. Different, different, different person. Everyone keep an eye on them. Now, did we hear that, or we surmise it? No, that was what we were told. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And you oh yeah. Say, say there's right. thirty people watch. You know, thirty people wearing blue. You know, we got thirty people watching thirty people. Don't we have some blue cloaks? But we have a blue cloak, don't we? Yes, I have one. Oh. But perhaps if. You wear the blue cloak, then someone would assume. But so. we don't know that it's a cloak. Could be a feather. Could be a hat. Could be a belt. Could be a dagger. Well, and maybe they don't know either. Wasn't that cloak from that school? Yes. So, do you think one of them folk are involved? It'd be a bit far fetched, but it's possible. Well, why not? Rival schools are a thing. So, if they supposed to be where this is the head of the Alornites area. Wait, 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 wait. So, so if they're supposed to be wearing blue, it's a signal for someone to do something with them. So, or to leave them alone. Right. And who wouldn't like to be left alone more than someone like you who's got something to do? I mean, I, I can wear a cloak. That's yeah. fine. It wouldn't draw any kind of suspicion. But And if they're supposed to talk to them, they may talk to you. It's I possible. can't believe that there's going to only be one person wearing blue. Right, but... Try. Could be I could also get a blue mask, just double up on it if that would be some use. I I think that considering these names are probably names of some note, whether they are upper city residents or lower city residents or whatever, not from here. Um, going into the lower city and, and speaking to those there, they tend to notice things. Those up here would not. Well, we are down. We are on the riverfront, so we are in the lower city right now. So, what? The plan is to go to some wine sinks and uh, catch a bit to drink and catch a bit to hear? I mean, it's not the worst idea. So, I reckon what I was thinking. Otherwise, I mean, Wolfgang seems to be Hmm. related to quite a few people on that list. Perhaps he can give us more information. After his. uh, medical treatment, yes. Well, yeah. he's been, that was done taking care of the other night, right? Oh, I, I don't know. Well, well what the, I mean, she said she, he was out of the seeing as though he may be the trusting type with uh, our, 
Our good friend Vaughn over here, he may be trusting enough to say some more. Could be. Maybe. <laughs> you got um, to Tobias Stroh is supposedly a trader that resides down here as well. My thought process is that at least some of these people have people that work for them that are here in the lower side. It's better than I was thinking. What was your thought? Go to the party. It's probably best to at least reconnoitre a, a bit yeah. before we attempt. Yeah, I just didn't know what the rim was. <laughs> here. It's here. Well, honestly, I mean, we don't got much to go on. <laughs> no, we don't. Well, I bet you know how, how these thing, how these things work out. If we at least do a bit of ca- catching some drinks and catching some some conversations. I mean, I'm not gonna say no to a day of drinking, but <laughs> we'll also, see, we'll see how this shakes out. I mean, we should also speak to Ernst. What with him being a resident here, he probably knows at least a few of these. At some point, the Baroness may have hosted one or two of these people. I would say it's, it would be fair to say that, I mean, we're inquiring about this because we want to keep the barrister protected, right? That is what we are here for. So it's not necessarily we don't got leads on that we're looking into who would be after the Baron, but that we are looking into these people so as we can make sure that there are no threats towards the barrister. Yes. Good point. Well made. Just an idea I had. So present ourselves as bodyguards. Well, isn't they essentially exactly what we are? Yes, but then that also brings the question of why is the barrister here? Well, we all know why the barrister's here. Right, but it brings the question from others outside of us. Should we present ourselves as we are watching this person? They could question why is this person here in the first place. Well, that's why I think we start with Wolfgang. He knows well, many of the people on there. Yes. And we don't got to say, hey, we think there's someone trying to kill Baron. We want you to help out. We just say, hey, we're looking out for the barrister. We want your information. Well, I don't really people. care if Wolfgang knows, but outside of him. I'm right. But right, it's good to know. He's an in, right? Yeah. You, you can't just go oh. knocking all these people doors saying, hey, you plan on baron, mur- murdering a baron? I mean, we could, but I don't think that's going to get the best reception. I, I figured, after watching the 13, that you don't want to just go kicking in doors. It usually uh, stirs up corner nests. It gets you shot. Right. So, so if you <laughs> if you want to have a word with the baron, how do you go about doing it? I don't know. It seems that... Uh, it seems that that option is considered uh, taboo. Nah. I mean, because if we can, if we can speak with them, then we can at least say, "Hey, Weezy here, Barrister would like to, for us to offer our services to help protect you. You're under threat. You know that sort of thing." Well, didn't Rosalia say he's going to be right busy anyhow, preparing for this party? It's also a pacifist and may not necessarily approve of what uh, our society has in the past been known to do. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we're going to be bringing weapons in there. I already am preparing myself for it. All right with that. No, but I'm going to do it. I think so. But, as a pacifist, it could be something that he doesn't necessarily want this resolved by us. And he has his own men, and it could be taken as an insult that we tried to jump in. Unfortunately, those of higher station are those that figure themselves of higher station. Sometimes you have to be careful with the words you say, even if it's in their best interest. So it may not be the best, necessarily, to go to the Baron and say these things. Also, if it's someone that's in his employ, that could be going after him, say his quartermaster, and he states that we would be doing this, and all of a sudden every bit of cover that we possibly had is blown. How much time we got? Two I mean, days. We're about days. two days. Alright. At some point we need to get masks crafted or bought for those of us that want them. Other than that, I don't know that we have much to do in the town and figure these things out. Well, I figure you two definitely wearing masks and gabbing things up. Well, I just saw across there in the market sold all kinds of masks, being winter solstice in all account. I'm sure there'll be a party all throughout the city. We'll just be at the Dupre household. Oh, sorry, the, my apologies. 
the RK household, <laughs> probably going to be a celebration of the entire city. Well, right, it's just that the masquerade's the crown jewel, per se. And I would assume we would want nice masks, not just the side of the road ones. So go ahead. Right. So you wearing a mask? Right. You know. Nope. So he's going to be a servant. So we got to somehow place you as a servant. That's good. This analogy is enough for yourself. I'm payment. Simple enough. Well, it still needs to be done. And, uh, so I'm thinking I should be wearing a mask too, right? Eh? Right. Okay. Uh, that is a question I think personally each of us has to figure out. Do you wish to wear a mask and walk around that way, or would you rather camouflage yourself among the servants? I am like a, like a fish that's outside of a lake. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. So, if, if you want me to wear a mask, I wear a mask. I mean, I can put on a mask and I can go, oh, <laughs> if that's what they do. Uh, maybe best for you to be a servant. I, I, they don't do that. No, I, no not typically. I mean, sometimes, it, it depends on the situation. Well, I thought they was being caricatures of things. Right. That's why we would be able to somewhat get by. Is because they all like to act down, so that way they don't have to act like themselves. We all go in there acting all hooty toity toity. They might just peg us for not actually needing to be there. Hey, the, the highfalutin types. Don't they make asses of themselves on this night? Is that what you said? <coughs> they make a japery, the low folk. The highfalutin types. I know at one point they wore white wigs. Yeah. Do they still do that? I didn't really think of taking note when I was in uh, uh, the the Dupre's, uh, you it's, know, uh, place. Make a jape of everything. So, see, the answer would be yes and no. I the fashion is what the fashion is where it is. I once saw a, a, a very high class knight, and this high class knight was a very deadly man, but. He was from the upper crust, and his name was Sir Sebastian Bastion. Barbara goes, I know him. I and, heard stories about him. And we used to have a lot of fun doing impressions of that man. Sebastian. But, you know, never, Not never, ever, yeah, never ever would we do that. You know, that sir, until he took an arrow to but, the knee. But he's, he's an old man now. I don't even know if he's still alive. He may be dead. Just, you know, dying a comfortable life. Um, What's well, the damn point? You ain't got to worry about putting on a face if you're wearing a mask. But what I'm saying is I could ask, I could act like that. But if you're free, I simply state that if you get too nervous behind, even behind the mask, at some point it could raise questions. That's all. So if you find yourself that you think that that could be a possibility, then don't wear a mask. Well, that's a possibility for anybody walking around, ain't it? Yes, of course. That's a funny way of thinking things. Yeah, I'll wear a mask. I overthink things. That's oh. kind of my job. Just be boring. They will forget about you and move mm. on. Accurate. <clears throat> be nothing. Alright, so I think at this point, instead of discussing the finer qualities of figuring out exactly what a mask should be or what your act should be when we get there, we should start questioning about these things. Right, I agree. So you want me to start asking questions in a bar? You can buy that. I, I'm not against that notion. So y'all can go talk to Captain. Wait, one last thing. So if we's going to be purchasing masks and maybe even a wig for myself, <laughs> this is weird. Me. This is strange. Um, when are we supposed to get paid when we arrive, too? Indeed. Because. <clears throat> We'll need some if I'm going to be getting a wig. Yes, Rosalia was uh, supposed to pay up. Oh, she left the purse with me. He oh. smiled. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for letting us know, Sammy. <laughs> what courteous of you. I figured we'd get around to it eventually. <laughs> well, uh, eventually has come. Oh. All right, then. 
So does anyone remove, remember what the agreement was? One million coins. One million gold crowns. Uh, it was ten. Eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> Twenty gold Insane. at Calterian. Yeah, and then thirty when we return. Yep. Twenty crowns total. It was ten now, twenty at Calterian, thirty That's on right. completion. So twenty, twenty each of you, twenty crowns. Yeah, damn. Except for me, because <clears throat> you weren't part of that deal. I have no such arrangement. Incredible. Boy, oh boy, you just emptied out this sack pretty quick. It's a pretty purse. You can keep the purse all you want, as far as I'm concerned. Well, don't belong to me. You ain't got my initials on it. He points for the embroidery. <laughs> well, I don't know. You can change your name. What's the initials on it? I mean, what's the initials on it? Uh, RHM. Romelia something. No, it's Okay, yeah. Uh, Romelia? Is that what he said? Yeah, well, sure. Romelia. <laughs> Romelia. <laughs> Romelia. It's from, a man's From face. Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, I kind of like it. No, I, I wouldn't want to be taking it first. That's not... No. Uh, that's behind, between Sam and him. Yeah. It's so, got a damn name. I'm not going to take her purse. <laughs> well, is there anything that you need? You need... You need some money so you can get a mask. I have a few coin. Okay. A mask isn't. Uh, I don't believe Kelterian is based on a mask-based economy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm certain I have enough coins to afford a, uh, a party mask. I'll make sure it's just good enough quality to uh, be acceptable, but not enough so much that it makes them uh, jealous or embarrassed. So, for those who wish to purchase masks down here in the lower city, those who are lowborn will pay a brass penny. Those who are burgers will pay a shilling. Those who are aristocrats will pay a gold crown. If you choose to wear a mask of a different station, which you can do, pay the according cost and lower your social class when you are in that situation to that social class. Fancy wig, by the way, is four gold crowns. Yeah, I think I'm going to be trying to do the opposite. So, you're going to buy up. Yeah. Oh, I'm buying up too. And I'm gonna definitely ask for help. I'm, I'm, I'm buying aristocrat on, on like, what should I I'll buy? I'll buy the aristocrat. Well, yeah, I'm gonna go with an aristocrat. Yeah, yeah. let's let's not yeah. dawdle too much about shopping. Let's just spend the yeah. coin. Make the choice yourself and write it down in your character sheet. I'll do it during break if that's okay. And be sure to indicate uh, what specific social class the mask belongs to. Um, how much was that mask though? Just. For aristocrat? One shilling for a burger, one gold crown for aristocrat, and then one brass penny for a burger. Gotcha. Is it a paper mache, or it is made of so straw and wood for a lowborn, uh, paper mache for a burger, and then for a um, for an aristocrat, it's a fancier paper mache that's painted. Uh, for the money that we just got, can I take it in different? Coinage, or does it have to be? Sure, gold? yeah, go ahead and split the coin up as you wish. Okay. Ooh, no. okay. That way, I don't have to do pay money change earlier. That's right. Don't do any money changing in the city. Mm -hmm. It's a trade city. They don't do money changing? That's right. Right there on the docks. But if you do it on the dock, you'll pay way more. Right. So you gotta do it at your bank. <coughs> For those Damn who are Is there a bank in this world? I want to start a bank. Absolutely. Remember that when you go to Europe. They're called don't they become a marquee. The airport. <laughs> no, don't do that. If you want to start a bank in this, if you want to start a bank in Mahal, or in uh, Mahal, you need to uh, become a marquee, yeah. a merchant prince, which the gem you brought, the Jimmy Brothers is right. Who's marquee? Marquise. It's Marquis. So, Guillaume Christophe Genevieve, in fact. What about if I marquee only mark. dealt in marks? Would it be a marquee mark? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I think most marquee marquees deal strictly in marks. Yeah. Well, I think what Walter said earlier: if you were, uh, if you were savvy at business, you'd be a biz marquee. Yes, you'd be a biz marquee. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh! While you are actually gonna. <laughs> You're in the middle of this. There's there, and there's quite a few people buying masks. I mean, to yeah. no great surprise. In fact, people have kind of came from up and down a river to sell their masks they have 
carved of wood or made of paper mache or a painting. It's kind of like this little carnival-esque atmosphere. There's quite a bit of celebration actually happening in the city. A lot of people have already kind of stopped working in preparation for the solstice. And r remind me, is it winter solstice? Is the changing from autumn to winter? It's the autumnal equinox, I think is what we decided. The autumnal equinox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The autumnal equinox, that's right. Solstice would be closer to Christmas. So yes, it's the changing of the seasons. The autumnal equinox is when this party will take place in two days. And so unsurprisingly, because today is a Sunday, it is the day of rest, so there's quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of uh, things going on in the city. And um, as you are kind of in between uh, these these people who are selling masks, one of them says, "Oh my gosh, this lady Satine! Look at her! Oh my goodness!" They're admiring how beautiful she is. Oh and she's walking among the crowd. She is she is surrounded um, by a number of sycophants as well. I'll ponder over. She is, uh, without a doubt, probably the, one of the most striking women you've ever seen. Uh, slender and buxom with red hair. Uh, she is surrounded by a collection of folk and she's wearing a long blue gown. She is doubtless, she, doubt, without a doubt, she is of the burger social class, but she is certainly wearing her finest, if you will, for a Sunday meant to attract attention, meant to be seen. Who's that? Ask like the merchant or people around that are talking about her. It's Domina Satine. Oh. I, I, sorry, I'm not from around here. She's quite beautiful. Indeed. Daughter of a burger, she is. Hey. It's quite well then. It lives quite well, oh yes. Oh, okay. He can't remove his eyes from her. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Oh, no. Look away, friend, look away. That's fine. I just... I'm curious of her. She seems quite enchanting. Nobody really knows what she does. Oh. Just, uh, lives a burger's life, I suppose. The man oh. says, almost barefoot, standing in the reeds of the river. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a fishing pole over one, hand, over one shoulder and a tackle box on the other. Well off, is she? Do as the burgers do, I suppose, in the fancy town up here. Yeah, he's yeah. pointing toward the lower setting. What's she doing down here? Huh. Don't ask me. Does she walk around here a lot? Well, I don't know. That's a strange question. Well, I just, that's a nice dress to be wearing down here, isn't it? A nice dress to be wearing anywhere, I suppose. That's true. Two enough. Two rich for my blood! I've only got two brass pennies to shave together. All right. <laughs> he wanders off back into the edge of the water to cast his pole. <laughs> she go talk to her. Cause you're a burger. I'm like, wouldn't a burger go to another burger if they was looking for? You just randomly walk up to somebody in the market and be like, "Hey, how you doing?" I'm like, I'm new. What am I supposed to do? I'm new to town. Where, you know, where's a good place to get a drink? You know, that's not amongst the amongst the riffraff. You know, I, I can attempt this if that's what you would like me to try. Well, you want me to talk to her? Um, I'll go. <laughs> she, won't, she dusts herself off a bit, tucks the aristocratic mask into her backpack so that she's not showing off. And... You can tell that these people who are kind of flanking her are are clearly a adorers of hers, uh, women and uh, young women and young men uh, of, of an age to just be called adults. She is probably five to ten years their elder. Uh, striking despite her age. She turns toward you and she has these, these these really, really deep blue eyes. Very deep blue eyes. It almost matches the color of her dress. She looks, her skin is not fair, despite the fact that she has red hair. It is dusky, dark. My lady, uh, a moment, I, I, I'm sorry to stop you if you're in the middle of something, but I must comment, your dress is quite striking. Oh, well, thank you. I don't believe we've had the pleasure before. Uh, uh, uh Elisa. Elisa. 
Dominus Satine. Oh, I, I have heard a tale of you. These whispers of your name. People talk of your beauty quite a bit around this place. I, I suppose she kind of turns away, blushing a bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not mean to point out. Uh, I simply, your dress is striking, and I, I had to state something. Do our fathers know one another? Your fathers? Yes. Would I know that? I'm asking for your surname, my lady. Uh, Amarius. Oh, she says. I, I did not realize. Mm -hmm. Truly. Indeed. Well, goodness, I am. <laughs> I am, uh. My apologies, she takes a deep curtsy. Oh, this no, 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 please don't. Don't, don't. That, it is my father's name, let me make my own. Would you like to join us for our morning stroll? Stroll? Uh, where would you be walking? You said you were new to Kale Tyrion. Perhaps I can take you throughout the lower city. You can walk with us. We can learn a little more about one another. We can chat. Us? Oh, my, it seems you've got quite the contingent as it is. Well, we shouldn't mind. We shouldn't mind at all, my lady Marius, one of them says. Okay. No, not at all, another one says. Lovely. <laughs> yes, well, one could not turn down such a kind gesture. <clears throat> and with that, they kind of begin to move away in a collector. <laughs> oh, Lisa so looks, looks back and mouths back. Help me. Terran's <laughs> 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 uh, like. <laughs> Harper's like, thumbs up. <clears throat> well, I guess that worked out well, Sammy says, <laughs> as you all step off the gangplank onto the, onto the pier. Well, that's there's one of us pulling our weight. <laughs> right. Um, so, I suppose, I suppose I could, uh, I could try and, and see about hitting up some of the veteran spas. You know, uh, my, my last name may be good or bad, but you know, hopefully, seeing as how it's my grandfather, maybe. It'll go over all right, you know. Even on the other other side and all, but you know, you do. You don't want nobody to know who you are, huh? You know what to do? Not to, you don't want to know what to do if you don't want nobody to know who you are. You don't tell me last name. You're right, right. But that's what I was fixing to say. It, no, it, what I'm saying is his name. <laughs> it what may. Was he, was he fixing? He was fixing, he was fixing to. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe at the masquerade he'll fix the wiggle. Um, so, yeah, I, I know that. So, what I'm saying though is, if I feel it out, because I'm better at feeling out fellow soldiers than I am other people. Well, there's a place that we just went last night called Rickards Halfway In. Yeah, right across there. All right. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get full way in if I. You just gotta step all the way through the door. Yeah. You be full way in. No, it's halfway up the bluff, he says. I was trying to tell a joke, but okay. <laughs> well, come on, then. All right, let's do that. I'll get you a drink. Is, what, got four of us going? Well, that's us fixing to ask you. I'm all right for that. I'll even buy the first round. I mean the five of us, sorry. Yeah, why not? I think, uh... I think the four of you would actually be best. I, uh, I'm thinking about maybe stopping in to see some old uh, school chums. Old oh, school gins? Chums. Chums. Oh. Friends. Amigos. Compatriots. Compadres. Well, I didn't know if, you know, I, they made rings for, you know, being in school and all that. They do, actually. They do? They make rings for almost everything. Ah. Well, uh... Why not? You, you, got, you said you got enough to get by, right? He shrugs his shoulders. I mean, I suppose that depends on what getting by means. But, yeah, I think I'm okay. Alright. I appreciate the, uh... I appreciate the offer of your largesse, but... Yeah. Master Vander! 
you get tired of shoving it up with your your comrades, you move me right up that bluff there. Not far. Well, it's just about that I'm staying near here. My gracious host of uh, have me, so I doubt I'll be going the uh, terribly long. I figure I'll just go listen to some uh, listen to some children of all ages uh, titter, if you will. Listen uh, to them squawk. How close is it to Mornland? To what? Mornland. Oh, it's months away. Okay. More than is in early autumn. Okay. So, to Rickards, halfway in you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The uh, place seems to be certainly busy enough. For a few folk kind of been here. Got the early start of the day. Imagine, what do you say, Patty's Day? That's kind of what it's like. People are already. Pretty inebriated at this point. Getting sick of it. <laughs> My God. Plague. Plague. <clears throat> Quite a few people, in fact. You come inside and you have to find your way kind of having to elbow and edge your way in. So busy is the place. Everybody's breath here is probably been drinking for a full four, for, for at least a night. <clears throat> it's busy. Very busy, in fact. Gumble, 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 gumble. So, Rhubarb. we'll try and find a place, and then after we've been there for, you know, a good bit to become part of the scenery, um, I'll start looking for other people who may also be missing body parts like myself, like I've got a veteran's eye, maybe a veteran's hand or boot or... Sure, so the soldiers, the vet- yeah. veterans. Yeah. You find a man um, who is kind of sitting by himself. Uh, I wouldn't call him necessarily brooding or sitting like Strider and fucking <laughs> in the middle of the Shire, but... One of them rangers. One of them rangers, <laughs> that's right. He's, he's got a big hood and a, and a long pipe. And he looks like Viggo Mortensen. No, um, he's in the dark corner by himself. You see a man not far from here, and he has, uh, without a doubt, he has a veteran's hand um, that he's kind of resting on the, on, the, on the table as one would, and he's drinking. <clears throat> he looks toward you, and he looks away, and he looks back toward you, and I know you, friend. I don't know, but uh, name's Talon, and uh, uh, I myself don't know the customs of soldiers or anything like sure. that, but I mean, it would be. Who'd you serve with? Uh, it would be good to offer to buy a drink, right? Sure. Um, so I'll lay, I'll lay some coin down on the table. Say, this next one's on me. Uh, and I'm try. I'm also trying to place which specific war I would have served in too. I am. Uh, uh, would have been uh, probably the strife. Okay. I would have been young then. Yeah. Um, so, uh, he's a wool bastard. I don't say. He says. Well, dude, but, you know, it was a long time ago. Old times indeed. Yeah. You? Opposite. Mm. Jenny Copper, he says. He stands and you hear the ringing of his spur as he stands up and extends his good hand toward you. Ah. It is not his right hand, it's his left hand he extends. Um, I'll give him my left um, to, to match with him and say, Ah, yes. Uh, well, it's a, it's a pleasure, sir. Right, please. He extends his hand to you to sit down. What about the rest of you? These Harper and uh, Warren. I mean, I'll scoot up to the bar and yeah, so I'd buy these guys drinks. So I'll buy these guys drinks. Okay. Two brass. Burps, so I'll do six. All right, I'll sit with him for a few minutes while I just look around the bar and see if there's like I don't want to catch my like a raw setter or something like that. I probably that I may know in from past experience. 
No girl stutters that you see, but there is one man who certainly stands out among the others, and none are really standing near him, despite the fact he's trying to get their attention. A fellow with a long handlebar mustache, uh, who's speaking in a very thick accent. What is he talking about? He's trying to get a drink at the end of the bar. Oh, he's just trying the bar to get... can barkeep will, will, will take care of him. <laughs> Feller over there, reckon he'd be willing to flap his jaw. Well, he might be a little bit difficult to handle, if you know what I mean. Yeah, well, it's a, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> Buy the man a drink, why not? Sure. Be friendly. You flag the barkeep down and lay down to the two brass pennies. Yep. And you point down toward the man, who's probably been up here for quite a few minutes trying to get the barkeep's attention, despite the fact the bar is. Pretty much just kind of come and go thing. They don't yeah. just sitting up here. And I'll tip over ass as well. <laughs> oh, nice. Barkeep will tap it and he'll put it in his he'll put it in the pocket of his little, little waistcoat. Yep. Well, thank you, thank you. I uh, I appreciate you giving me a drink at uh, a place like this. Uh, it does not seem that they are paying much attention to me here. Well. Bit of a rowdy place, it seems like. You kind of got to muscle your way up, and I figure, well, yeah, yeah. you can't leave a man standing, so, especially when he looks as thirsty as you did. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> the man is dressed a bit outlandishly. In fact, his colors are, the colors on his clothes are vanilla and chocolate and strawberry, but the best way to describe the colors he wears mm. upon this colorful circuit. I don't think I've seen you around here before. Oh. I'm so sorry, excuse me. I am Hagen Hasselnuss. I'm Harper Clavager. Nice to meet you. I'm Warren Rose. Ah, a pleasure, a pleasure. Yeah? We just, trade we're... or pleasure here? Yeah? Huh, we just we just came into town the other day. Looking forward to the festivities. Yeah, yeah. It started, I believe, uh, last night at the end of work, so the, the city has been... Uh, Rather busy, <laughs> yeah? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's been. A, it's, everyone's bustling around, getting ready for a grand old time. It looks like. Oh yes, I am certain that old oak will be um, the place to be, <laughs> <laughs> as they say. Very true. What brings you to the city? Can I tell what social class he is? He speaks like. A burger, kind of. His his all dish is a little bit broken. It's kind of hard to discern. You need to continue interacting with him to discern, determine that. Okay. <clears throat> well, came on on a ship the last night, and uh, well, we got a few days short leave. So uh, and then, uh, well, he will sail us. Well, as of right now, bit do a bit of this and that. Uh, Privateers, he says, well, kind of whispered. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to handle myself. Let's just say that. Oh, of course. I mean, uh, a man such as yourself certainly looks like he uh, no, does not take no for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah. that's pretty true. Look, I don't think he's ever said no if I asked him if he wanted a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Who would say no? Why would you turn down a drink? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I, I like asking those kind of questions. But yeah. Well, what do you do here? What, what are you, oh, in town? myself? Yeah. Well, I am a, I am a trader of sorts, I suppose. Uh, 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 creamed ice. Creamed ice? Yeah, yeah. It is my business. Uh, uh, they call me the Ice King of the city. Oh, I thought all the goats milk cream. But suddenly you've seen my ships outside, yeah? Like, oh. like we said, I just came into town. Oh, they are laden with large blocks of ice brought from the north, from the mountains, from the Stedwall. Huh. I bring them here, I shave the ice for the nobles, make the creamed ice for the, uh, for the folk who wish to purchase it, mix it with strawberries and sugars and other manner of um, flavors and colors. Uh, Caramel. So that that sounds right delightful. That explains the Coke. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I figured since they had to call me the the Ice King, I 
but dressed like uh, as a Neapolitan. <laughs> well, that's a mighty uh, fine and exotic treat, he sounds like. Never had such a thing. Yeah, she takes the ice. He goes on and explains yeah. this very lengthy process, mm-hmm. and he does not stop. You've certainly piqued his interest, and his story will continue for quite some time. No, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, well, he's tell you, he'll even go on and tell you about banana splits. He's... Mm-hmm. <laughs> A boat? You put it in a boat? <laughs> so that brings us back to uh, that brings us back to Jonathan Banner. The others have have left at this point. Uh, you were out uh, on the docks, and you were repeatedly going to go visit um, someone here locally that you may have known. You may have been a, a classmate to, perhaps, or whoever it may have been. I went to school here a long time ago, though I don't know the city at all. I'm going to go find uh, where the Alaranites go to socialize. Oh, yes. Guys. <laughs> All Alaranites. I'm sorry. There's a place in the upper city that is simply called the library. Sounds pretentious. Sounds perfect. It does sound perfect. As you walk in, without a doubt, this place is filled with Alaranites as they are wearing their, their, their surcoats with the long, the long dress at the bottom. Tightly kind of uh, fitted with the tall Nehru collar, and they are wearing their small hoods as well, with the long kind of folding robe like arms and such. The place is relatively busy. Uh, as you walk in, the conversations are clearly of a, uh, of well, the conversations that, that, that scholars would have with one another as they are arguing and bickering over philosophy, uh, <laughs> but no less, they are certainly drinking. Uh, and um, some of them have certainly let their guard down as well as some of them appear to be a little bit drunk, a little rowdy. Some are singing an old school, an old forming school song, a fighting song, if you will, um, as you can imagine that uh, old fraternities would sing. I'll sort of work my way in, wait for them to say something in their philosophy discussion, which gives me an opening to make a uh, make a pun that will. Get them to chuckle and try to f- force my way into their conversation very gently. Yeah. Calculator. <laughs> yes. Right. How about them apples? This is good hunting. That's right. It's good. Yeah. Very fun. Jonathan Vanda! You hear a high, shrill voice. Oh, that immediately it brings back really. Well, a mem- bad, bad memories of memories of a, of a woman who was incredibly insipid and annoying from an old class. Mm. And her name, as you turn about, her face is certainly aged, but you recognize her without a doubt. It's Josephine Booker. Oh, then. Well, yeah. It has been ages, she says. I see that they have uh, relaxed the admittance requirement for this place. <laughs> <laughs> she laughs her her annoying laugh uh, that you recall. Like that's what was annoying about her. Like, she's perfectly pleasant, otherwise, save for her high shrill laugh. I would describe this as uh, reprobates, but uh, to our advanced age, perhaps we are reprobitten. <laughs> you are ever the jokester, as I remember, Jonathan. What brings you in these parts? Why are you a Calitarian? The autumnal equinox. Naturally, I, I'm to attend to the uh, the Baron's court and uh, give them a uh, display of uh, stories of daring do and wave my arms about and use you know polysyllabic words and see if I can impress them. You have been invited to the Baron's party, she says, kind of a bit, maybe a bit taken aback. Invite might be a. Uh, a bit of an exaggeration. I uh, intend to present a great gift from the Baroness and Durendal. I am selected oh. as her envoy. An envoy to the Baroness? Mm. Well, Jonathan Vanda, I have. Congratulations. If I've either moved up in the world or down in the world, but I have certainly moved parallel in the world and to the direction that is the east. Hmm. She nods. <laughs> she. Her conversation seems to kind of leak, to kind of give you an indication that she's a bit surprised at somebody of your caliber. And she says it in very polite, but 
meaning, but 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 ways that to 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 ob, not necessarily obfuscate how she feels, but to explain that uh, she's a bit surprised that you, of all people, would have been chosen for this. Mm. But I am, uh, I am not alone. It is a uh, a shame that I uh, find myself betrothed. I would uh, otherwise ask to uh, attend you, as I understand you will be on the. Uh, the guest list as well, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, goodness, you are ever the flirt, but you know that I have given my life toward the learner, and I have must abstain from marriage. Yes. <laughs> I have, uh, I have, uh, decided not to abstain from marriage, and I have no regrets, but I am certain it will be wonderful to see you there. Well, I'm sure, t- I'm certain that your wife is very cute. <laughs> You know, it's a rather eccentric guest list, I should say. I have a feeling that uh, mouths will be a a murmur at some of the the names I have seen on there. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, only the elite of Kale Tyrion have been invited. John. Oh, but I should... Vander. She waits a moment to pronounce your your last name. Whether I'm the elite of anywhere is insubstantial. I'm definitely not the elite of here. I have not been here in many seasons, after all, and I was uh, a tourist at best. Thought you'd come back to tour your old alma here, but nay, you are here to make some grand presentation on behalf of the Baroness. Well, <clears throat> it's work if you can get it, I suppose. But Maybe yes, a rather... <laughs> A, 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 the, 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 the who's who, if you will, of Kale Tyrion, without a doubt. Uh, Lady Gabriella uh, has uh, many friends in the city. Yeah, and it seems like, uh, I assume that uh, she counts you among them. I would say that Lady Gabriella and I are certainly close. She smiles, and you kind of, you kind of pick up, you know, you know that that Josephine has a tendency to over-exaggerate, so probably her relationship with um, Lady Gabriella is she's maybe extending to the truth a little bit, but we are the closest of friends. Mm. No, I'm <clears throat> I'm certain that that distinction could fall only upon you, after all. Oh, you are. You troublemaker, you. She's my house. Roll a charm test. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is your social class? I am aristocrat. You're, host, you're a higher social class than she is, so uh, it's going to be an easy test. Or, sorry, are you order a castle light? I'm order one. Oh, nice, yeah. Easy. Alright, easy charm is 68. And I roll uh, 78. I did not succeed. Should I re-roll it? I have yeah, a fortune than, points. I have better than 50% chance. It's this up is to a you. good time to do it's, it. Sure. It's a, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be that. Yeah, I'll take it. Misfortune point, thank you! Alright. Give it a shot a shot. It's the red with the tens place. It's the highest here. I'm just sort of saying for white so it's clear. Yeah, it's got worse. I got an 85. <laughs> Sadly, she ain't buying it. Well. The flattery has failed. Without a doubt, you will do. Well. What? I should hope that your performance is not tepid. I shall have something that uh, most in the room would uh, desire, which is the attention of all of the elite of Kael Tyrion, watching me and hanging on my ever word. I'm certain that, you know, such flattery would be above you, of course, to desire such things. So. Shall you stand up on the dais and, spe- and speak of the gift? Perhaps it shall depend on how many coins are laid at my feet or stuck upon my girdles. <laughs> Surely you jest. I don't know. I mean, how many coins are we talking about here? <laughs> no, it shall be, uh... It'll be fine. It seems, though, that, uh... A number of these guests couldn't possibly get along. Well, you know how uh, these circles work... This person dislikes that person. The other one did this to that person's wife. I'm certain you understand that there's a 
pecking order, even among the rich. <laughs> but surely, not to, I'm sure that everyone will there will be behind masks and they'll be perfectly well adjusted. Or at least they will go to mask their intentions. I don't, uh, well, I don't intend for my routine to resemble a, uh, the Club of Friars. I should hope that I would not uh, socially intrude upon a, uh, a social taboo or perhaps land a, uh, a joke or a, a witty aside that is uh, perhaps a little too close to the target. Hmm. Among this crowd, I should hope not, given that uh, also the gods will be down regardless. Perhaps that's why I've chosen you. Hmm? Yes. Someone of a middle stock. Tell me of your gift. I am certain that uh, word will reach you by the uh, the morning, regardless. But uh, oh, come upon down. the docks, you will find uh, the great Madeline. The what? She said. A vessel. But not one that is borne by sea or by road, but by the sky itself. Come now, she says, holding onto your arm. Oh, bless your heart. I know that it sounds extraordinary, perhaps uh, implausible, or perhaps downright unlikely, but I assure you by the by my own eyes it is true. Well, if you have such a wondrous marvel. Certainly you must speak to Armani Warhol about it. He will be at the party. I heard. I assume he probably is uh, sleeping it off ahead of time already. <laughs> I am sure that he is uh, banging about, as they say, here in the lower city. Uh, new to Kaelterian he is. Taking in the wonders of the uh, more pedestrian artists. A collector, you see. I've heard. I've heard. It's amazing what one can do when one has more time and money than one has to expend. But, nonetheless, I'm not certain that I can uh, make light of anyone's uh, lifestyle or habits or hobbies as I'm the one with a... A balloon that carries men. She smiles and nods and continues talking and everyone and she continues to try to get in her gentle ribbings or in some cases not so gentle. Uh, <laughs> back to um, <clears throat> Elisa. You are walking along the uh, the markets at this point outside along the lower city. So tell me, Elisa, what brings you to Kaeltirian, she says, with a long, drawn-out uh, accent. Ladies. She locks arms with you as you walk. Yes. Ladies, really, the, my business at this point is not about much interest, uh, but what finds you here? Well, I have been in... Kale Tyrion for quite some time since we moved here when I was younger. That was some number of winters ago, I'm certain you can understand. Oh, so few, I'm sure, looking at just your face. You are too kind, my lady, she says. Right. Your family, then, they, they, uh, they find themselves here? Uh, yes, my father, Tobias Stroh, he is um, a tradesman. Trader, a merchant of sort. Oh. The uh, father has uh, many business interests in Kale Tyrion, including Old Lork and Rowaline, of course. But mostly in Kale Tyrion, she seems to quickly kind of like back her story up as to not, because to imply if you have business at Old Lork is to imply that you're a criminal. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Well, we all find ourselves sprawling with our businesses and our ideas, don't we? Of course. And she smiles. So tell me more of yourself. You, you've come for the um, autumnal equinox? I, I have, yes, indeed. I, I heard that uh, 
It's quite the place to be, Calderion. Milady. Milady Mary. Lady Marius, yes. please. Please do me the honor. She turns to you and produces a letter from her pocket. She says, I have been given an invite to a very important party in two days hence. Being that you are, yes, being that you are from out of the city, you are from outside and you are, well, lady, your, your name precedes you, you are the daughter of a king's man. Perhaps you would do me the honor to be my escort to the party? I promise it will be, it will be a party suited for your family name. There will be many people of import there and I, it would be my honor to, to take you with me. People of import, you say? Yes, goodness, uh, Baron Clayton Arcade, the younger, in fact. It is at his mansion above in the upper city. I. My father's going to be there. I know you would have plenty to talk about with him. And oh. and and she continues on. And there's a dancer as well, Delilah. And okay. then she continues on with the story. And, and Josephine Booker and even the baritone of Bellagame will be there. It'll be quite the soiree. Oh, it, it does indeed seem so. I, I don't know that I could find myself there in, in <sighs> council of people that I don't know. Could, could you possibly tell me of these people? I would not. I S- Forgive me, Domna. May I kill you, Domna? Please. I, I, would, I would not like to find myself with these people without knowing anything of them. Milady, have you, would you spare the day and the morrow with me? Could you tell me of them? I, I could not just show up. And oh, my lady, we... We speak. <laughs> if you're going to... If you accept, then I will take care of you. I'll ensure that you have the finest of clothing and a dress suited for your family name. We can speak of all of Kaelitarian if you wish during that time. If you would do me the favor of escorting me. I... I would find myself wanting nothing more. She smiles gently, and she has a very pleasant smile. She is very genuine. You can feel like there's a deep sense of empathy kind of coming from her toward you. And despite, and perhaps she, perhaps she is misjudged for her beauty, but they do not see that she is truly an empathetic and I, I would like to see if this seems to be an act or if this is actually what she's like. You must spend time with her over the next day and a half, I guess. Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, hang out with a hot lady. Let's do this. <laughs> so these sto- these time. stories the, the this this time will continue, and uh, you you'll be mostly kind of taken away at this point. Um, so, but it won't end your story by any means. Um, we will simply go back to where we were at, and Rickard's halfway in <laughs> the seedy little tavern. <laughs> You all are, I'm assuming you've been drinking for an hour or so. Right, now I'll be, uh, 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 I got a day, I can get drunk. Sure. (laughs) Both of you, uh, so the the three of you need to make, uh, routine toughness tests. Okay. 81%. 19. The critical (laughs) thing. 71. Did you critically fail? Yeah. Oh nice. my god. <laughs> so, Warren has He's clearly chase been drinking. Chicken. It's, it's right. Uh, by the way, these larger dice uh, from level up dice, I think it is, not level up dice, just roll two dice, are amazing. They're 25% larger than normal dice. They're nice. fucking incredible. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, so 12, 20, 23 physical peril. Uh, you are intoxicated, um, and you have plus three to your damage threshold during this time. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, because you drank, uh, you get three corruption. <laughs> Sorry, one corruption. My apologies. Okay. Hey. So Warren is deep in his cups, and you find that his bar tab is adding up very quickly, so fast that the barkeep doesn't even come up to you. Simply keeping tally, scrambling a little piece of paper over by the <laughs> cash till. I'll eventually like move him away from the bar. Yeah. <laughs> And that's when the source is calling me, the Ice King, he says. Well. I stood upon the block of ice, almost seven feet in the dimension to the height and the width and the depth. 
and I declared myself, I am the man who shall bring the ice to Achille Tyrion. In fact, I am providing the ice, and have been invited as a honored and esteemed, esteemed guest of the Baron Clayton, uh... Mm. Clayton, uh... Mm. Arcade, I think? Clayton Arcade, yeah, yeah, him. Alright, well... Well, ain't that fancy? Well, I don't, I don't really know him to, from Dimish, but, uh... <laughs> he apparently is some big big in the city. So you're gonna be feeding him some cream dice. <laughs> this would be a creamed ice bar there. In oh. fact, uh, I have my people carving it from ice for the past week. Wouldn't that, uh, wouldn't that be giving some <laughs> bad disposition for their tummies and, and such, you know? But why would you think of that? Uh, well, have you, you ever know, had your drink with with ice? Uh, no, that, that ain't natural. You, well, I mean, you, you don't need to be cold. Whereas the ladies of the court prefer to put uh, ice cubes in their vine to, to water it down so that they can continue entertaining throughout the night. It is the most fashionable among the people who have many creases in their clothes. Yeah? Well, so goes. could you put could you put the creamed ice in booze too? Well, certainly you could put the creamed ice in the booze if you only mix it with the rhubarb. Huh. Well, that would be quite tasty. Yeah, yeah. I imagine with honeybee it would be very tasty. Or perhaps a butterscotch. Uh, schnapps. I get behind that. Yeah, he says. You should just put up one of these places and do that. So you're you're gonna be running the, the creamed ice bar. Well, I'm not going to be running the creamed ice bar, my people will, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it is the introduction of creamed ice to Cade Tyrion, you see. A very important event for me. Oh, I get it. The king's not a servant. You're the ice king. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that's right. Smart. I like that. I think I think that's gonna I, I think that's gonna be the highlight of the place. Hold we shall see. It's, uh, I am be interested to see how the people take to it. I certainly swear by it. It's it a very tasty dish. But to your point, like one cannot eat so much creamed ice without getting a a stomach ache. I think it'll be the icing on the event. We shall see. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't seem to quite get the. Uh, the analogy, like yeah. his 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 ald is right. good, but not yeah, great. Yeah, I get it. Like it's... <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, over in the other corner, where the music is just a little bit quieter. It's the library. So it brings you to uh, Peltirium. I suppose it brings many people and shows the life though. I did. Got a bit of uh, mercenary work from time to time. And I was supposed to protect something on the way here. So I'm here waiting to go back. Go back to where? Oh, I was thinking about going back out uh, east. But uh, was stationed on. A ship that was coming this way, down the river. And, uh, so we're here. What's a war bastard doing working as a mercenary? That is his, that is his first attack. Yeah. You can feel the sting of it. His words are as sharp as a sword. Meant to cut through the bullshit. Make a dial test. Uh, okay. What's your social class? Uh, low more. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, you were, you were a Ravanian? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's all that really matters, I guess. In your Order of Chaos Aligned. Order. Okay. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be easy. Okay. Easy gal will make it 58. And a 14 will succeed. How do you parry his words? Um, I'll say something along the lines of, uh, Forsters are born and bred for violence. We don't want to do it, but we do it. And if that's what you're known for, then you may as well make money on it. You know it. It was something I was born into. And uh, you try and make honest work, people think you're going to do something else. You understand that? He says, 
Well, another drink. Maybe so. So what brings you here? Well, I suppose I'm here for the uh, celebration, he says. At uh, autumnal equinox, what not, they say. That's right. My sister. First, I say, sorry. My lord's sister invited me. Are you lord's sister? Yes. Okay. Lady Gabriella. So I take it, uh. Uh, forgive me if I'm assuming wrong, but it's, it's something that you may not uh, be all that excited about. Well, Lord R.K. and I suppose I could go back a way back at least. He is the brother to my um, former Lord Stanton. Mm. I know that name. Yeah. That name was uh, something that put it, put all of us war bastards quaking in our boots. Oh. Found ourselves on the wrong side of the battle lines, I suppose. But water under the bridge, mm-hmm. as they say in Hastings. Yeah. So, you know, after your uh, war bastards burned every stronghold to the ground, that's when I came here. Wasn't, wasn't the most fun. Some of them took a little too much enjoyment out of it. But I didn't. He nods. Well, let's not speak of the past. Let's speak of the present. I saw you coming off a ship. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Madeline, they call it. Looks like he's about to sink in the harbor. Look at this. Even though it can go on the water, they say that it's not supposed to be on the water. <laughs> they say it flies. He kind of takes a beat. It flies? Yeah, like a, like a bloody bird. <laughs> well, if it fly like a bird, why is it on water? Because it's broken. A uh, broken wing, huh? Yeah. And who's in t- who's gonna nurse that broken wing here in Kale Tyrion? I don't know. What where I see it is, uh, even if it doesn't work, it's something that's, uh, you know, status symbol. Hmm. But if they do nurse it, then well, I would change a lot of things now, wouldn't it? Well, I've certainly heard a lot about horseless carriages and Rowaline. Yeah, I. I heard, the, I heard the name Rumble Butler. Sure. My point is, is those have a tendency to uh, be dangerous. Yeah, it's true. And you brought it here to kill Tyrion, this flying ship. Yeah, we did. Um, what I hear, I hear that it's going to be given to, <coughs> to uh, the Baron. Truly. Mm-hmm. Upon whose accord? Well, you said that uh, you said that your last name was Copper, right? Jenny Copper, Sir Jenny Copper? That is my name. And so I'm going to try and, after spending some time with him, uh, just kind of suss him out to see if I, I think it's a good idea to name drop his brother. Like, I know that there's not much to go off Make of, Make a but, challenging scrutinized test. Yeah. Okay, challenging and scrutinized will make it 31. <clears throat> 47 won't do it. <laughs> so, you know, there was somebody that I rode out here with. They had the same. Thought you flew here. No, 
They say it can fly. It never, it never flew when I was when I was taking it. So you came from Rowalain or Old Lork? <laughs> well, we came from Durandal. <laughs> and uh, so the ship flew from Durandal to the river. Ah, uh, it was carried out on a on a carriage of sorts. But anyways, what it, what I was trying to say is, man, I rode out with. He had the same surname. Wolfgang? That's him. You're under the employ of Wolfgang. Copper. Yeah. Just to be clear. That's right. Huh. Where is he now? He puts his drink down. I can't say I rightly know. When when we got here, he went on his own way. What's the name of the ship again? It's the Madeline. Perfect. He stands up and takes the sword off the back of his uh, off the back of his chair and fastens the belt around his waist. You can finish that if you want it. He uh, stands up and you hear his spurs ring as his boots kind of thud thud thud. People move out of his way as he walks out of the walks out of the Rickards halfway in. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. <clears throat> Back to the uh, go back to the the, 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 the library. <laughs> well, day at ice cream. <laughs> this is a very strange story, Josephine says. Well, that makes it rather appropriate for the occasion, doesn't it? <laughs> Truly, I, I am I am so rude, she says. Jonathan, may I buy you a drink? I, uh, I hate to put you out. Do you still drink that, um, beer? <laughs> she is clearly drinking bead. Which is a middle class. Right. Well, as I am no longer uh, 11 to 13 seasons old, not as often as I used to. But I'll have whatever you're having. Oh, um, Amit, are you sure? Seems to me that uh, the honey that uh, is added to your uh, beer would help settle my stomach. Mm. She smiles and will take you to walk with you to the bar. <clears throat> I don't know. This is. Uh, it feels different, but it still feels the same, too. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't really intend for this to sort of for it to happen like this, but now I, well, I feel like I am on the precipice of a major historical event, and uh, my thoughts are all flighty, and I don't know. This is a this is an interesting time in which we live. Oh, indeed, you have been given a rather weighty charge. I should hope that. You have your speech planned and written, and that you made ample preparations. I seem to recall that during our lectures in our youth, that you oftentimes fumble words. This is a, an interesting uh, memory that you have, but uh, does not necessarily match my own, but that's all right. Nonetheless, you are correct. It is, in fact, a weighty charge. I saw how many oxen it took to haul it. Perhaps I can coach you with your speech. Ah, you know, I think perhaps the element of surprise is my greatest weapon here. Mm, I would hate for you to find less enjoyment by having uh, practiced or rehearsed ahead of time. Perhaps it would come off as wooden and maybe a little disingenuous. You were always, her as I said. You were always such a knave, Jonathan. <laughs> I suppose. But what is in a name? I guess I shall see you at the uh, at the party then. I shall uh, be sure to save at least part of my dance card that doesn't uh, come from, you know, my comely wife. Oh. Of of course, she says. It it yeah. was it was a pleasure catching up with you, Jonathan. Uh, and the pleasure was all mine, I am sorry. <clears throat> 
give a perfunctory kiss of her hand and make my way out. Much like returning to an old hometown that uh, you can't help but be glad you're rid of. Uh, you have that kind of feeling as you kind of shake off all the old memories and feel much better in the open air of Kale Tyrion outside of the library. At some point or another, you all will reconvene probably back at the Madeline. We'll assume after the sun sets. <clears throat> so it is, it is night. You have done most of your things already. So is there a cream ice shop around? Like no. No, there is not, no. No cream dice shops yet. Yeah, because I'd be like, man, I gotta get some of this. So, uh, like, yeah. There's always money in the cream dice stand. Right? <laughs> 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 Bananas, <dance. laughs> uh, When I return to the Madeline, I'll look around to see who else here. Oh, everyone's here. Everyone. It's around the table. No, I mean, as far as NPCs go. Oh, uh, Sammy's here, but Wolfgang is not. Hey, Sammy. Yeah, he says. What's up? Wolfgang ever talk about his family? Sometimes. He's talking about his younger brother, Malharth, a lot. Do we ever hear of of, uh, Genity? Oh, yeah. Then Wolfgang got a big brother, little brother thing going on. What do you mean by that? Wolfgang's middle brother. You know how it is with middle brothers? Can't say I do. Got, got nothing but sisters. Well, Jenny's a right son of a bitch to him when he's younger. And granted, they're old men now, I suppose, but of a kind, but, you know, people just uh, lose touch. Sometimes blood isn't thicker than water. Now, I might have told Jenny that his brother was in town. Well, I suppose it was bound to happen eventually. I mean, after all, Wolfgang would have known that. Old Jenny Copper, well, he hung up his spurs here in Old Lord, and he hung up his spurs in Kale Terry. My understanding, at least. All right, so. You, you, you don't think I got nothing to worry about? By saying that, huh? What do you mean? Did I worry about? Did I fuck up? That's what I'm asking. I'm sure, Wolfgang. Hurts, father. Show me your fight. Where is your strength from, son? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yep, done did. <laughs> Fell down here. Show me your fight. <laughs> that was an unusual track. <laughs> that was aggressive. We got me some more sour worms. Well, I suspect that, uh, I suspect Wolfgang kind of knew what he's getting into. <clears throat> we'll take it on. We'll know what's going on. He wouldn't come here otherwise. All right. I don't think you got nothing to worry about. It's just family matters. Yeah. Well, did I do that? Is that what? <laughs> that's basically. What... <laughs> yeah, that's what. That's what Terrence go through, but he's just displaying it differently. <laughs> Man, this sound is uh busy all day. You can still hear the music up and roll around. I saw heard. some parade out in the middle of the street earlier with half naked men and women. I heard they Dance started around, last night. Dancing around maypoles and everything. They're going days deep. Oh yeah, you look down the river, you can see all manner of fires down that way. People, well, just kind of forgot that they got jobs, I suppose. Right. It's like the city ground to a halt. Everyone needs a little halt in here and there. Right. <laughs> Have you ever heard of this thing called cream ice? Because I'll talk to him about that. Because <laughs> I'm still pretty That hungry. sounds gross. He says. No, no, no. Okay, you've had, like, cream, right? From, like, a cow... Like cow cream? Right, right, and then like it gets turned into butter. Like you've you've had butter, right? Well, of course I've had butter. What do I look like, a simpleton? So, so think about it. Like it's the creaminess. Don't make that judgment. And that, but it, it it's cold, and then they add in things like strawberries. That's horrible. Why fake. would you put cold and cold together? You use cold to make warm, warm cooler. I mean, I mean, I haven't had it, but it sounds fantastic. 
I'm certain it does. Can't wait to try it, I suppose, he says. That'll be the highlight of my night. Sounds kind of soupy to me. Well, that's the highlight of your night, eh? I'm just saying, if you can learn how to do that, I think we make some money. Maybe this, uh, maybe this, uh, charlatan pulled the bull over your eyes, but that sounds just plain disgusting. I don't know why you'd eat it. Like, wait, so, cream? so you spent all night talking about cream that got cold. Right, well, with the Ice King. The Ice King guy. Wasn't he one of the guys? He is. He's going to be there. He said, is that bloody, wait, she's not there. Oh, I'm there. Everybody's here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Everybody. Let's again. Everybody is here. She got released. On your list, is there bloody... She's dressed very finely, too. Is there bloody Ice King? No, she had gone and changed. Like, uh, when okay. she got back. Because okay. she's like, oh, this is way too nice for me to walk around in. Okay. I can't breathe. His name yeah. was <laughs> Gristle Stump or something. So, uh, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, there was... Like, um, I'm terrible with names, but I would actually get... Popping Castle Nuts. Is that, is that yeah, I think that's the one. The one with a lot of legs. They, they mentioned... She, the barrister did mention the Ice King, which was Hagen. It just sounds like gothic mess to me. I don't know. Listen, uh, I grew he up... talked on and on I, about it. Well, I mean, it sounded like it could actually be a thing. Okay, confections out of the side. Uh, or to the side, I should say. Um, Any reason he might have to go after the Baron that you could tell. Well, he's got what the uh, the thing that you can eat. You can put the poison in it, right? Oh, oh, just because he could doesn't mean that he would. Well, he could. Right, I, I think he has the means, but I don't think he has the motive. Oh, so you're going to be a servant then? Well, I didn't establish that, but uh, I could. I guess you forgot about it, didn't you? I mean, I, I must have... Slipped my mind, I got uh, a few drinks. And Warren, you always been an old blockhead. I just... Yeah, I know. Oh, brother. I know. <laughs> it's all right. Always it's always the pig skin. His sister always pulled a pig skin out before he'd kick it. <laughs> Falling that old blockhead every time. <laughs> yeah, I can't deny that one. <laughs> well, at least you found out about a new food. Well, and, and we got information on a person, all right? What'd you do? I have and fancy around walking like you are, or were. You got invited to the party legitimately, and now I'm being asked to know all the people that are there. Great. Would you like to make more comments? All right. There, there you go. So you're getting all the hot gas from everyone and seeing who's going. Yeah, gods I don't want to. Apparently <laughs> that's where I'm at, yes. Well, that's <laughs> what uh, do Frank do. Yeah. Well, hmm. I rode elbows with someone that I may have fought against at one point. Oh. Yeah? Did that go well? No. Oh. Mm. Didn't go well at all. Mm. But uh, he was uh, he was insulting me the whole time he was talking to me. You know, trying to lace it with... Uh, Did he also oh. talk about the Zez? No. Oh, he was trying to lace it with Vana. You know, but turns out he's Wolfg Wolfgang's brother, and so oh. after talking with him for a while, he seemed a bit prickly, but he didn't seem like the underhanded type. So I just thought I'd tell him. Maybe we can have Wolfgang sort him out. Oh well, you see, seeing as how he's a he's a bloody knight, it may go the other way around. He got his spurs. He was wearing them. You got he got a burr up your ass, burr up his ass about you. Don't all knights? Um, not all of them. Well, you see, seeing as how not this night. Uh. Seeing as how me, <laughs> me father, me grandfather were all on the field at the same time, and we defeated them. Yeah, he may have a bit of a problem. But well, but well, you walked away without any bloodshed. Now, yeah, well, you see, that's the thing. I think he had an even bigger problem when I mentioned his brother. Because as soon as I mentioned his brother, he's like, where is he? And he gets up and leaves. Why? And, and he, Wait, didn't well, see, he didn't seem to be too pleased about it. Oh, lovely. You know, I figure so, I, I see me in my family dynamic. 
we we get along pretty well unless you need discipline and then they put you in the military well i i suppose we could uh wait till uh, wolfgang comes back and then figure out what happened from him if he does well, he's probably he's up there he's probably going busy. up to the upper city you didn't see the way he, he his face turned even more sour than sour when he when he heard that night. Let me have that cream dice before he talked to you. <laughs> <laughs> so you talked about desserts and you pissed off a person that has military experience. Jonathan, how did you set off to kill mission on fire? We took okay. class reunion, it sucked. <laughs> yeah. I ran into Josephine Booker. I tried She's to. on the list, all right. She was. I knew her from a long time ago. The name didn't strike me at the time, but now, yeah, she's a, she's a middling intellect. Nothing particularly interesting. <laughs> Very insecure. I tried to see if uh, maybe she would be willing to name drop or drop some gossip about anybody who uh, maybe had some some burrs or some proverbial bees and other proverbial bonnets up the, uh, with the Baron, but unfortunately she either would not tell or did not know. I'm betting on the latter. Well, so no one health student, a pissed off knight, and a man who sells desserts. I don't see a motive yet, at least. I suppose there's that. Well, no, maybe in, yours. No, no, as a matter of fact, I think that I think that he cares for um, uh, Clayton. Does he care? All right. No. Uh, I f- but I don't think it's because of Clayton. I think it's because of Clayton's brother, Stanton, that he cares so much for Clayton. But Stanton's dead. Is it possible that Stanton had some kind of problem with Clayton? Uh, probably if he had any sort of problem it's because Clayton's a pacifist. But, I mean... Stanton Arcade was a right son of a bitch. Well, that's the right about it. I yeah. called him the Red Knight. I ain't call him that because he wore red. I assume. It is known. Butcher but, of Bender's Ridge. Still think we should have yep. that shield off with that bone picker. Yep. But if a loyalty extends past death, it's possible if Stanton had a problem with Clayton, it could be some kind of vengeance. Well, it's an awful long time to right. let that stew, especially for a soldier. And especially without a blade. Um, just stating possibilities. Yeah. You, no, it's true. I mean, it is possible. But I figure if, if a man like Jennedy was going to do it, it'd be, it'd be with violence. Well, <laughs> Domina happens to be the daughter of Tobias, so I can get information on him from there. And I'm assuming she probably knows quite a bit about the other people that uh, happen to be invited. Because she is from here. Alright, well you can keep on pushing on that then. Apparently I'm going to. Perhaps we should call upon the, uh, the Dupre Pavilion in the morrow. Because I don't think we can get up tonight, right? They close the gates at night. That's um, right. So Although they may be laxing that duty, given all the drinking's going on around here in old Lord. Sorry, Kale Tyrion. <laughs> I mistake it. You, you forgive me. At this, it's like it's a lawless den of pirates around here. There's no, there's no damn soldiers to be seen anywhere. I mean, everybody's off duty. Might as well be old Lord. Well, we can always make our way up there. Worst case, we just gotta make our way back down. Well, there's two people that could be of interest that could possibly be somewhere in one of those bars, which is. The Dancer Delilah and the Baritone of Bellagame. All right, round two. Yeah! <laughs> Do you have a constitution to keep this up? Oh, you don't know me. Warren's been close talking the entire time. Help. He brought back a drink. He actually took a cup from the, from the bar and brought it back in a drink. Just tap some drink. Oh, yeah, we need to resolve your tablet. We'll do that later. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> well, but there could be a way to find those two. Well. And there's, of course, the man at arms that could be possibly partaking at night. Well, if it's a bard of that renowned, I figured there'd be a following. Right? Well, I mean, we... someone like his stature ain't going to go around with 
we'll just, like I said, we'll just hit up every bar and we'll find him. Yeah, that seems the most efficient yeah. way to use of time. Well, maybe. well, logically, he's correct. Or maybe. we find the bar that has a large enough stage for entertainers to possibly be there. Oh, well, that's no what's fun. A, what's a baritone? The singer. It's, uh, the voice hits a certain level. Like really growly, you know? Like the level what? Like a low. Yeah, a baritone. Mm. Oh. <laughs> that's a good joke. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, it, it's... it's it's the notes, it's the pitch that their voice can hit. He's a rider? No. Um, instead of singing here, he sings here, or here. Yeah, it, it, that's pitch. No. Oh. oh, he got kicked to the nards! Yep, that's it. Alright. Yep. I thought it was the other way around. No. Well, whatever. He must be somebody what important was... to be having such a lofty name well, like that. Maybe. Maybe. The, the baritone is the second lowest range of notes that a male singer can have above the bass. I was simply trying to point out that there's a difference in range. Yeah. I just took that thing and took it away. Uh, all right. I'll trust you on this. He's so he a, sings like... He's a singer. He sings like a man, but not like one that uh, the voice is really rumbly and low. Ah, okay. He's got gravitas. Or he's got, as they say, they got a man who's got right. some gravel in his... Uh, what? Like a bear. <laughs> he's, he's a I believe it. Hey, blockhead. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've got well, nothing. I know that this Armani Warhol is also around. He is a... Uh, he uh, is an artiste and has just enough money to fancy himself uh, playing as poor. It requires quite a bit of coin to do that. <laughs> Well, then a bar with entertainment seems like it could be a place to find him as well. Well, I mean... So you think this dipstick is uh, one of these uh, water watering holes right here? I figured it'd be upper crust. There's only one way to find out. Oh. We hit up every bar in the new city. That at least cuts it in half, right? So that increases our chances. You get the top, I get the bottom. <laughs> I know the, uh, we'll I know the, the baritone. <laughs> Back at the halfway. He fancies himself as, uh, as a populist. He fancies himself as a, uh, he believes that it gives him depth and mystery if he, uh, slums it, as it were. The popularist one must be far easy to find. I mean, he'll stick out like a sore thumb. His, uh, yeah. So he's the one always, the, the one who's... Always spending all that money on the lowborn to make it look bigger than it really is. Probably. That's probably right. <laughs> Though he's probably makes himself look about as big as he is, just next to smaller people. Like a paper tiger. Or, uh, literally, whatever the metaphor may be. Something like that. Analogy, what do you... So okay. Based on the cost of this mask, a paper tiger is relatively expensive. Feel joke and look around, smiling, hoping somebody will laugh. And then feeling <laughs> well, that's a that's a fancy mask you got there, Mister Vander. A year's wages for some, not for the baritone. Mm. Um, yeah, I had to, I had to put quite a bit into me costume. Huh. Yeah, I buy some gear off for <laughs> I see that uh, your night at the bar was of, uh, was successful and came with a, uh, a certain promotion. I see that they were giving away free cups. <laughs> well, Warren, is, you know, Warren is holding the wall, the wall up right now. <laughs> well, you He's know, I, I did what I came to do, and I'm uh, going to go back. Well, you get a bird tone voice right now! <laughs> well, the good news is, if that's the cup they intended to poison the Baron with, then that plan is foiled because it's in your possession. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad your optimism, Jonathan. All right, so we go should go collect mission complete. That's what I heard. It's relatively big. If oh, I don't know. Do we uh, do we go back to our pursuits in the morn, or do we uh, wander out into the night like? Uh, Nah, it's still young. Well, I don't want to sleep on the boat. I want to sleep in a bed. You'd be, you'd be, 
You'd be hard pressed to find a bed that's available this time of night. The place is damn full. Well, that's why I'm saying if we can get up <coughs> to the, the pavilion. You mean you think you mean Rouzo asked? I can't sleep in that uh, old haunted house. They said the we place could is come strange. And go at any time mm-hmm. we wanted. Listen, Harper. We all came here to find out all the information because everyone's awake this time of night. And they're flapping their jaws because they're drunk. So they you gotta are. stay up and figure it out. Right, but I'm gonna sleep in a bed. That's all I said. Well, they're not gonna be up tomorrow morning if they're anything like me. Well, I didn't want to say I'd go right sleep right now. I'm saying we go up to the new city. We find ourselves some carousal places. We see, we find this Bardo guy and uh, this Barry, whatever his name is. Um, and He's then, the barrister uh, of Bellagay. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah. You should, the Come barrister. on now. The barrister. The the baritone of Bellagain, I said. You should uh, the drunk are you as well, You sir. should tell him the stories of this uh, um, ice cream and all that. Well don't tell me about it. I heard plenty. No, no, no. The 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 bard. Right. Because yeah. maybe bards like milk. Maybe? Yeah. I mean they they even added this uh, far off thing, uh, Cocoa or something is like it's like dark, but you wouldn't think it looks good. But it, it apparently it t- it's, it tastes amazing. No, it's Wait, incredibly they, they... bitter. Well, you add some sugar to it or some honey. I don't know. He, he went in all to it. Like I said, when, when we show up at the masquerade, there'll be a whole display for it, and you, you go get yourself whatever you want, any kind of toppings. He said you got you got your your uh, your, your uh, strawberries. Your blueberries, your cherries. Sounds liable to make someone sick. Uh, I don't trust it. <laughs> I'm just oh, saying. But the good news is that if there ever comes a time that we need knowledge on this creamed ice, you are definitely the professional. Right. So I'm just saying. <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you. I'll tell you. I won't, I won't say I told you so, but I'll be thinking it. How about we move on from yeah. this? Right. Doing? Up to the new city. And down. Mm. Well, you, make sure, you make sure you get some sleep. Right. We'll sleep tomorrow during the day. No. You make sure that you turn in a little bit after the witching hour. Because if you're sleeping all day, then you're going to be like shit when the, when the masquerade comes about. It could take you a whole day to re- re- recuperate. Yeah. Get too drunk. Especially you. Like this and... blockhead. Can I elbows you? <laughs> I- I'm keeping it below them levels. I have not chased any chickens yet. Yeah. Well, <laughs> That's still young. It is. <laughs> That's why we should get going. Yeah. Well, you just be careful, Mr. Stomach Wiggles. I- I've not eaten anything. I've only drinking. So it- it'll-, it'll be fine. Oh, yeah. Will anyone join them in their uh, revelry this evening? Sure. <laughs> what the hell? It sounds it, it sounds interesting at least. Uh, what are you I'll ask Cecilia if she wants to go as well. Of yeah. course, Jonathan. Of course, I shall join you. Yeah. Terwin wants to see if he can maybe look out for Wolfgang because he's mm. a little concerned. A lot of people in the city late at night. <laughs> the only place you would know really to look would be the ship where he repeatedly stayed the night before and he's not returned yet, but it is. Yeah. The sun just set, after all. Yeah. So what of yourself, Elisa? Mm. You will show care for Wolfgang and wait for him. Yeah. The three of you will go to drink in the upper city and for Elisa. Elisa will go to the city. upper city, but she's not really going to oh, drink. Okay. She's just going to nope. hang out a little bit and see what she can do. You're going to teetotal? Yeah. Tourist. Yeah. Australia. Nurse, nurse one yeah. wine the entire night kind of thing. Certainly. So the celebration will continue and um, <laughs> even in the upper city and you will you will spend your fair share of coin. Um, let's go ahead and make, everybody needs to make a, with exceptional these, uh, you don't need to make anything, you're drunk already. Um, <laughs> you're, you're already intoxicated. <laughs> this lasts until you go to sleep. <laughs> 
against everybody else. Okay. Uh, as for Jonathan and Harper, we're going to make a standard toughness test. Right. See how well the two of you fare this evening. Forty-two. That's oh eight. That was six. Nice. Forty-two as well. This will be a roll for the evening. Twenty-eight. Nice. Well, the good thing is you keep your wits about you uh, with Elisa's goading or instruction, and you do your best to kind of slowly nurse your drinks. Right. All of you, uh, so first off, who's Ravanian? Raise your hand. Okay, and you are not. So anyone who's Ravanian, sorry, you order a Chaos Alley? I am order, kid. Or order line, yes. Okay, you want your sub, Elisa? Order. order. I'm actually born in Calteria. I just noticed that. Nice. All right. Uh, mm. She didn't grow up here, so it doesn't really matter that much. But. <laughs> and then, are you order a castle line, Jonathan? Order line. Order line. Okay. So the three of you may make a rumor test. In the case of Elisa and um, Harper, because you're a Rovanian, your test will be easy. In the case of Jonathan, it will be routine. All right. 73. Oh, sorry, standard. My apologies. Standard. 50. Does this count as gossiping? Yes, it does. All right. You said uh, easy? Yes. Easy rumor. Mm-hmm. 48, 58, so a 68% chance. I don't know why I keep picking up that red guy. It looks too much similar to that. All right. Ah, uh, nap. Well, fortune. Not my that. night. Yeah, what the heck. Let's do it. Didn't work last time. Let's do it anyway. I want a rumor of that. Critical success. Whoa! Right, For yeah. a rumor, right? Nice. I succeeded on the reroll. Great. Okay, so tonight uh, you learned some interesting information because you were kind of in the right place at the right time and the right bars to inquire. So the first mm-hmm. thing uh, that you hear uh, is actually a rather, this is for, Jonathan learns this, a rather scathing rumor about Baron Clayton R.K. Uh, apparently, um, he is a connoisseur of pornographic woodcuts. Mm-hmm. In fact... He has uh, he has repeatedly has several pornographic woodcuts that have been brought from Durendal of the Baroness herself. <laughs> the what you learn uh, in your case, uh, Harper, is you learn that uh, Lady Gabriella uh, is indeed the sister of Wolfgang Copper. And that um, she apparently has been, she, the, the more she drinks, the more personal and vile her insults get. In fact, it is said that she has a great disdain toward the Baroness Dupre. Who's that? Oh, that'd be yeah. the, uh, are you talking about the Lady Gabrielle? Okay. So she, the, the wife of the current Baron. That's right. As for you, <laughs> Elisa, it's only fitting for the fact that you spent your day with Donna Satine. You can't help but inquire more about her and her father, Tobias Stroh. You learn nothing else about Tobias, save for the fact that he is clearly a, a, um, a well-to-do man who is frustrated at the Salt Peterman. But it is not. But it is not the story of him that is the more that is the one that you kind of reveal with your critical success. Great, by the way. Um, you learn that Domina uh, is, in essence, an incredibly influential woman with younger folk, and that she has gathered almost cult-like status with some. In fact, those who flock around her call themselves the Velvet Throne. And this is where we will end. Oh, did, I'm sorry, did you... Did Warren... Your... Did you succeed your room? You're, sorry, I, I didn't. Roll, I didn't room. roll. Sorry. So you were you're an outsider. Mm-hmm. So you're, are you order castle line? I am uh, order line. Order line. Nice. So your test will be routine. And this is rumor, you said. It is rumor. Yes. Okay. This is just starting. You're him and Hall. This would be forty six since I am currently at Big Morse two two skill oh. ranks. And it's a fail failure. Check your reroll. Uh. Go for it. Yeah. All right. What the hell? What has ever stopped you in the past? That's right. Chaos. Sometimes I don't re-roll. Chaos. Plenty of times. I'm pretty sure we have video. That's a 95. No. 
Alisa, so, however, will take some mandrake root and see if she can notice anything. Else. We will get to that oh. next week. That's this is fine. this will be okay. the end of episode forty-four of Queen of Embers. You didn't get to episode forty-five, which is fine. Yeah. This is an extra long episode for everybody who tuned in. Yeah. Thanks everybody for no. listening in. Um, we will reconvene next week with um, Banneker. Tim will return, and um, we will get to. The party. party. Next That's right. week, actually. Oh, right. Okay. Or Kate will be out. Because oh. we Jink on. Nobody yeah. else is going to know. <laughs> they won't know. Yeah. <laughs> so we have, oh, we have oh, corruption, oh, don't we? Nick, Nick. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wheel oh, of yes. corruption. corruption. We have to say it together. Wheel, Wheel of, of corruption. corruption. So who has corruption on the table? Raise your hand. Okay. That was a good boy. Here we go. I drink responsibly. Oh, I forgot to erase from that. I just rolled a 99. <laughs> What's the value tonight? It's a Nick spin Nick again. Spinning. Nick okay, spin. That's fitting. What's the crafting value? Is seven. seven. Okay. Seven. seven. Order rank. Yay. I didn't give any chaos for this rank. Right. Right. I'm going to give it a order rank. Right. No kidding. So thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we will see you all soon yeah. on Queen Members. Thank you for your patronage. Excellent. Thank you for watching. Thank you. And thank you for your support, guys. Your yeah. Patreon. Awesome. Yeah. Your Patreon. Thanks, folks. Thank you all. Bye. 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 B